Welcome to another episode of Kicking It in the Second Half. This is episode two, coming on a Friday night, March fifth, uh, and I'm Andy, and I'm with my co-host tonight, Hugh. Say what's up, Hugh. Hey, how y'all listeners doing tonight? Yeah, yeah. Hey, tell the people again. What are you? Where are you wearing tonight? Uh, I'm rocking. Uh, I'm rocking clay tonight. Shane. He's uh, injured this year. Miss watching him play. Can't wait for next season. Can't wait to see him back. Splash Brothers. Splash, splash. Yes, Once again. Yeah, that gets us into one of our first topics of the night, which is the news about Blake Griffin. Um, if you followed anything of that about that here recently, he uh, had been sitting out for the Pistons uh, due to um, – the fact that they were trying to trade him and or buy him out. So the route that it looks like they're planning on taking is the buyout route. So uh, just give him a rundown of a few teams that you've heard of that are possible suitors for him or he's interested in going. Uh, yeah, so I know he, he uh, supposedly said about four teams that he'd be interested in going to. I think uh, a couple of the good fits would be Miami, I think, would be a good one. You know, Myers Leonard is out for the season, and they could use some depth behind uh, Bam and Olenek. So I think he could fit in well there. Another one kind of interesting is the Warriors. You know, they pretty much bes besides Wiseman and Eric Pascal, they kind of just rely on the perimeter guys. So, you know, Draymond's not much of a scorer. So, you know, I think he could he could help out there. Another interesting one. It wasn't on his list that he would want to go to, but would but one that would make a lot of sense would be Dallas. Um, Dallas, you know, they have trouble scoring in the front court, really, besides Porzingis. So he could he could help them out a lot with that. I think. What are your opinions about how Blake Griffin's been playing this year? <clears throat> um, your man, honest opinion. I, I, Sum it up I, in I, one I, word. To be honest, terrible. Uh, I mean, just he's you know, I'm just I know he's getting older and. What he ain't had a dunk since 2019, but uh, nah, he's just not. I don't think he's a player he used to be, but I mean, I still think you know he's a veteran and has a lot of experience and could teach a lot of young guys, you know, help them out. And I think he still has has value, but uh, but I don't as a player wise, I wouldn't expect great things. And I think that's what a lot of us are seeing. You know, he looks like a player that you would think is on the verge of a few years left in the in the league and then he's out the door. But on the other hand, like you're saying, the value of what he can do for older guys, but you know, he was kind of on that train there as far as uh, doing that for the Pistons along with Derek Rose, but with him going to the buyout market and looking at potential teams, um, like you said, the Brooklyn Nets, Golden State Warriors, Miami Heat, and the Portland Trail Blazers, are the teams that he particularly uh, was interested in pursuing. Um, I think if he went to the Brooklyn Nets, of course they can use uh, a player like him or any players in the buyout market, you know, as far as getting their team situated to gear up for the second half and enter the playoffs. To me, if I see him going to the Brooklyn Nets, he would be kind of like a DeMarcus Cousins to the Warriors. Uh, that's just my opinion because of the role that he would have there. You still have the the three hit it uh, juggernaut uh, between you know James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant, and then you have his old teammate DeAndre Jordan, which is an interesting concept there. But at the same time, um, with the lineups, Blake Griffin could be a player that is in the rotation, but maybe coming off the bench. Um, unless they keep going the the route where they are resting two, uh, I'm sorry, one out of the three superstars while two of them play on most nights. Um, another situation is him going to the Golden State and or Miami Heat. Uh, I see him being able to contribute with the passing game. Of course, the Warriors have Draymond Green, who – basic leads their team, I think, the whole NBA in assist at the moment. But just to have another big with court vision, the way the Warriors like to, to swing the ball around, you know, if he finds great rhythm with that team 
and they're looking to possibly keep him for the following season. That'll be interesting to see with uh, Clay Thompson hopefully rejoining. So that isn't a bad move there. Kind of get him back on his uh, pathway to the right track in, in his career. And then if he were to join the Miami Heat, of course you have Bam down there and Jimmy Butler, who are great at facilitating, along with Goran Dragic. But having Blake Griffin there as well, another versatile big that can pass with the court vision and setting up some of the young shooters and Duncan Robinson or Tyler Hero, I think he would be a a pretty great fit there for uh, somebody cheap on the buyout market. You know, with the Miami Heat being the Eastern Conference champions of last year and making to the finals with the team that they had, you know, adding him, I don't see it being a problem as far as, you know, breaking up what you already have or disrupting any of your team chemistry. You definitely want to be stronger this year than you were last year because that's what everybody else is doing around you, especially in the Eastern Conference. But um, one of the biggest things I was interested in him, uh, the the place for him to land would be in Portland. I think that would be a great opportunity for him. That situation would remind me of how Carmelo Anthony kind of got reacclimated into the league last season. Uh, coming coming uh, to Portland and them giving an the opportunity. And then with the injuries this year, he has an even bigger role, which we know he could fill that role. He was always a, always has been a shooter in the league. But for Blake Griffin to go there and to have the opportunity because of the injuries of C.J. McCollum, who should be back before long, but you also have Zach Collins, who's out still, and, uh, and Nurkic. So he definitely has opportunity there to gain some footing and to get, you know, accustomed to how the team plays. And then when or if they're fully healthy and ready to roll, he can definitely come off the bench. Or if they feel like, hey, he's a great fit um, with Nurkic on the floor, that he can be a great facilitator to help that team out. But I, I definitely like like him there, and I hope that he finds a, a great place to land. But out of those four, if I had to choose where I would like to see him, I would pick Portland. I just think that's the best fit for him. Now, all these teams that we mentioned definitely have, uh, uh, you know, a winning opportunity. And right now they're all looking like they're definitely going to be in the playoffs and pass the first round, uh, you know, if the matchups uh, favor them. So that's definitely not a problem there. I uh I will say I do I, – I would probably agree with you. I do think probably – I think I would most likely – most like to see him go to uh, Portland. I think he had the most opportunity there. Uh, I mean, maybe in a Warriors fan, of course, you know, I wouldn't mind him coming there. Uh, but, I mean, probably he would end up coming off the bench. And But I just think from his standpoint, you know, if he wants to kind of revive his career a little bit, get some playing time, stuff like that, help out a team uh, the most, I think that would be in Portland as well. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I think our friend, the Zach Hammer from Tavern Geek, would definitely agree with, agree uh, with that. You know, yeah, shout out to Portland. So, yeah, definitely um, something to keep an eye on that should happen between, I would assume, now and when uh, we resume the second half of the NBA uh, by Wednesday. But, um, yeah, off of that note, our main topic for this podcast, today's episode, is – uh, the NBA All-Star game coming up for Sunday. You know, we just did a uh, live draft for the first podcast and we got the results of the actual draft last night. And what did you see from last night's draft that might have caught your eye as far as how how both Kevin Durant and LeBron James drafted? <clears throat> well, uh I mean, starting at, at Kevin Durant, I mean, obviously, you know, I think pretty much everybody expected Kyrie to be his first pick, which it was. You know, Harden was his first pick off the bench, which, you know, teams usually do as teammates. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing. I, I would have liked it. Well, with Kyrie going first to, uh, to, to uh, Team Durant, I think, you know, LeBron was able to get Giannis with his first pick and Curry with a second pick. And I just – I think that LeBron's starting five, personally, is, is stacked. I think uh, by far they have the best starting five. 
I mean, um, if you look at I mean, at, definitely. At, I th- I'm going to let you finish up. I think the um, the odds were definitely in his favor. You know, based off our last podcast, what I was kind of mentioning was that, you know, out of respect, we were all thinking, you know, Kevin Durant would, would choose Kyrie Irving. So that just left the gate open for LeBron to pick between his first and second pick, whoever he wanted outside of Kyrie Irving. And let's be honest, if it was anybody else choosing in this uh, in this draft outside of Kevin Durant and or another Brooklyn Nets player, Kyrie Irving probably wouldn't have been the second to put, pick. Would you agree? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, that ha- it would have to be Steph Curry, if not, if, if he didn't go first. And I was surprised at. Well, I guess I can't say completely surprised, but um, that it wasn't Steph. But like I said, he kind of had in his pocket that he can go either Giannis or Steph first um, between those first two picks. So definitely no brainer for LeBron. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, if you're just if you just want to like analyze their starting fives, from my opinion, I mean, let's look at uh, KD's team first. I mean, obviously he picked Kyrie as his teammate. You know, I like. Kawhi, I, I'm really big on Kawhi. I like Kawhi. Um, Tatum, I, I'm I'm big on Tatum. I like Tatum. Shout out Tatum. I see your shirt. But uh, you know, yeah, we're rocking Boston tonight that, for the Boston <laughs> fans. That. I'm just plugging that in. You know, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of the NBA. So this is not the team I normally roll with, but I do like watching uh, Tatum. I am a Duke fan, so shout out to Tatum. And Jalen Brown, you know, we'll get to that. But uh, Jalen Brown, even though he didn't go to Duke, but, you know, he's definitely representing for the Celtics this year. Yeah, but I mean, uh, back to Tatum. I mean, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a Tatum fan as well. But uh, I just think since he's came back from COVID, I don't know. I, I don't think he's been quite as effective and as, as, he, as he normally would, which I think he came out and said something actually about that afterwards. But. I mean, nonetheless, he's still a great player. But I just mean, if you look at LeBron's, I don't see a, a weakness in his starting five. I mean, you have size with, you know, Jokic and Giannis. I mean, you got LeBron who can do about everything. And, you know, you got Curry and Luka, you know, which can, you know, they can knock pretty much all his shots down. I mean, you got three guys who can bring the ball up the court. So I, it's just. So let's like, I can't wait to you know, see how they're going to do that. I want to go back and forth with you here because of what you're saying, looking at the two teams. Um, you want to start with Kevin Durant or or keep going with LeBron here? Oh, it's up to you, buddy. So, all right, I'm just right here looking at you know a, a picture of the lineup that I have on my phone for uh, LeBron's team, and you know it kind of looks like a team built definitely for Giannis because you're talking about the other four starters around him. Any of them can bring the ball down. Any of these four: Steph mm-hmm. Curry, LeBron James, Luka Doncic. And Nikola Jokic. I mean, what what can go wrong for Giannis in this situation? I mean, you're talking a lot of passes, no look passes, but then you got Steph Curry who's going to spread the floor for you. And don't forget Luca with the step back. So, you know, even though he's got the ball in his hands for that step back move, just cut to the basket during that step back and, you know, easy pass. And then LeBron, you know, we're going to probably see him pull up from the logo as well, especially if they run a lineup with Curry, LeBron, and and Dame. So, but but yeah, definitely, I I definitely agree with what you were saying as far as you can't go wrong there. I mean, it's just so much versatility in the half court. Like this is probably the greatest five assembled in in modern time for sure. This would definitely be something if if it were possible that you would want to lead the uh, Olympic team with, but obviously with three of these players being international players, we won't see that. But then, yeah, um, mm-hmm. your thoughts on Kevin Durant's team as far as them not being as strong. He did try to go balance. Now, obviously, you're looking at his lineup. The, big, the biggest piece missing there is the fact that Kevin Durant himself isn't in the lineup. So you're already at a downfall there, and you're having to backfill with – a uh, with what would be your most versatile player in Kevin Durant next up would probably be between Kawhi Leonard and, or Joel Embiid for me, uh, Kyrie Irving. I love what he does with the ball. Like, um, cousin Fred said on the last podcast, definitely the best ball handler I've ever seen. And uh, I give big respect to him on, on that aspect, but you know, he can definitely pass, 
but to see people move move uh, their feet like Joel and B is definitely um, a lot of talent there with that guy. And then Kawhi Leonard, what he can do with finishing and scoring. But the playmaking there, you know, maybe Jason Tatum could add a little bit of versatility to the playmaking. I mean, these guys here, when I look at this team between uh, just giving the rundown, Kyrie Irving, Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, Bradley Beal, and Jason Tatum, I see a bunch of scores. So I see where if the ball is in their hand, I see a lot of isolation game. But guys who would take that isolation challenge and, and definitely can put the put the rock in the hole. So where their game might not be a lot of run and gun as far as LeBron's team, in the half-court setting, this team looks pretty good. So you're talking about a well-rounded team, especially with Joel Embiid holding it down for the center spot and maybe trying to drag a player like Jokic out of the paint. But who knows? With Like I said, with uh, Kevin Durant not there, if he were there, I would say Giannis Antetokounmpo would be guarding Kevin Durant. But with him out, you could put Giannis on Joel Embiid if you like. Just see what happens. I like that. What do you have for your thoughts about about the bench now that we covered uh, each team's uh, starting lineup? The bench. Okay, so see, starting lineup, I, like I said, I would have to put LeBron's first uh, with the better starting lineup. But if you look at the bench, I mean, they're, they're both obviously great benches. But I, I would honestly – I would probably put first uh, – I like Kevin Durant's bench more. I mean, without without Booker, you know, losing Booker with that injury, he's not going to be in uh, an all-star game at the three-point contest anymore. And, that you know, that's terrible. I feel feel bad for him. But uh, he got replaced by Mike Conley. And, you know, Mike Conley is a great player. But, you know, I think everybody was excited about seeing Booker in there. But, I mean, you just got, you know, James Harden, who's a – you know, can do a little bit of everything. You know, Zion, I mean – what else do you need to say about Zion? I mean, hopefully we can see him slam down a couple of, couple of baskets. You know, Zach Levine is going off this year. Julius Randle, Vucevic, Donovan Mitchell. I mean, you just got a, a bunch of good guys, a lot of first-timers. Um, and then I just think that team is uh, really well-rounded. You look at LeBron's side, I'm huge on Dame. So uh, I really like Dame. But then you got, you know, CP3, Jalen Brown, Ben Simmons, PG, Sabonis, and Gobert. I just looking at them on paper, I think I would rather have uh, Kevin Durant's uh, bench, but uh, that's just me. What do you think? Yeah, initially looking at it, I was thinking, yeah, Kevin Durant, I think, kind of pulled the hit a little bit on that bench uh, compared to what's on uh, Team LeBron's bench. But this is the part of the draft that got very interesting. I guess you could say juicy because of how LeBron drafted, in my opinion, was in a strategic order. Um, once again, Kevin Durant had to go James Harden just out of respect, but oh, yeah. probably one of the best guys left on the board. So you know who was left after that, right? It, it was Dame time, like LeBron said. No brainer there. Guys should have been a starter, but you know when you talk about Seth Curry or, or Luca, maybe taking Luca's spot, but you, you had to go Dame. So that right there is a threat alone. You look at look at what he can bring, but then you add another big guy with uh Ben Simmons but a big guard guy so Dame Lillard doesn't want to bring the ball up let Ben Simmons uh, do uh, bring the ball up but then you have Chris Paul another floor general who we all know that the definition of a floor general is basically somebody who makes everybody around him on his team uh better so you, you add him on there a veteran guy that knows how to play the game with basically anybody so putting him on that team was a great fit. And then you have Jalen Brown, Paul George, Rudy Gobert, along with Ben Simmons, were basically counters to kind of how Durant's team was as far as uh, people from the same team. So then we kind of get that, you know, same team rivalry feel, I guess, if it's in-game lineups. Like, you know, would you agree you would like to see, like, maybe – Paul George guard Kawhi Leonard. Oh, that, that would Brown, be Brown, Jason Tatum. Um, what else we got here? Um, Rudy Gobert. He's not going to guard Donovan Mitchell, most likely, unless, you know, just for kicks and giggles, maybe something late in the uh, second quarter. We might see that just, just for fun, just for TV purposes. 
and then um Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, maybe the same thing. Maybe Joel pressures Ben to uh, stay outside on the perimeter and, and pull up a three. But but in general, you know, just from a game perspective, in the fourth quarter, you're going to want some of these guys in. And, and, you know, what better guys than the guys who play with them every day in practice? So um, definitely like what LeBron did there. And then, of course, he picked up Sabonis along the way in that draft um, when he needed a big guy and not picking Rudy first. And yeah, shout out to the first timers that uh, Kevin Durant got. I think Jalen Brown was LeBron's only first timer, but a big blow to Kevin Durant's bench. Like I said, initially looking at it, I was like, man, I really like that bench and what they can do. It looks like a solid team, but you you've lost Devin Booker, so you you took a hit there. But um, by um, now acquiring Mike Connolly as the uh, selected player to. Re- Replace Booker, you know, somebody who's been long deserving of an all-star nod. So this is his first all-star game. And, um, you know, I think he'll put on a a decent performance just to to show that he belonged there uh, a while back. But, yeah, definitely with Zion and Harden, you could see lobs there. Zach Levine's going to be exciting to see. Uh, Harden's going to let him run the floor. And then just uh, Julius Randle with his footwork. you know, if he's replacing Embiid from the starting lineup and uh, Vucevic is is um, playing solid, he can score, shoot the three. And, of course, Donovan Mitchell, the the spider. So he, he's really, uh, really explosive. And he should definitely have fun. Him and Rudy, as far as being uh, snubbed once more by both of them being drafted last <laughs> by both teams. So, yeah, I, th- I think it would be interesting for them. They're the – those two guys are um, on the Utah Jazz, which, as we know, has the best record in the league right now. They're sitting number one, and uh, they're representing for Utah. So, shout out to Utah. Um, but, uh, yeah, on another note, during that draft, um, if you notice in the video from uh, Kevin Durant and uh, LeBron James, uh, when LeBron James particularly drafted Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant, had mentioned uh, right after that he wanted Ben. He wanted Ben. And, um, you know, so something was was going on in his mind there where I guess clearly he thought he had a chance of getting Ben um, after Harden. But maybe Ben is the guy who could um, change change the tone for either bench as far as maybe he was the make or break guy to uh, to fill out the bench. We'll see. But, you know, I'm sure he wanted Ben Simmons to pair with Joel Embiid as well. But this is this is what we got. So it's definitely going to be exciting to see, and I can't wait for that fourth quarter defense that uh, that I'm expecting them to play like they did last year. This is already a competitive game just from a draft standpoint between LeBron and KD. So with uh, KD not playing, he's definitely going to encourage his team to go out there and and have his two uh, partners from the Nets represent for him. Hey, you got anything hey, like to add? Yeah. yeah. What's up? Yeah, I, I'd like to ask you a couple predictions. Yeah. A couple, couple came to mind while you were talking. Do you see Ben Simmons shooting a three in this game? I do. I think I, I could see him shooting one or two threes, maybe one if we're lucky. I don't want to push it. Uh, I think they'll come in the first quarter if he shoots it. You know, uh, second half is going to be a little bit more serious because, like I said, hopefully in the fourth quarter it becomes more like a realistic game. But, sure, why not? Shoot your three in the All-Star game, but probably go ahead and release that sucker in the first half. <laughs> go ahead and get it out the way. When you like first that. get on like the court, that. you look for your shot. I like that. All right, now let me ask you. Uh, between the two teams, who do you think will be the leading scorer in the whole game? Okay, so yeah, I haven't really given this much thought. So usually the leading scorer is definitely the uh, most likely to get the key of game if their team wins. So first off, I guess I would need to look at the leading scorer between – Okay, the two teams. Sorry, I'm just going back and forth here looking at the oh, two lineups. And I mean, Beal would be it for the for uh, uh, Kevin Durant's team, obviously, because he's leading the league. There'd probably be I'm Curry. Curious, probably Curry much, for the war. I'm curious to see how much playing time uh, James Harden will get. But it, it's going to be interesting to see because I think James Harden's going to be more of a facilitator here. He's definitely going to score. 
But it might be interesting to see like somebody like Zach Levine get a lot of uh, points off of you know some open shots, or Donovan Mitchell could go off, uh, or Zion Williamson just from any uh, easy cleanups. But uh, for Durant, if I just wanted to go from team to team, I would say um, Joel Embiid just because he takes the game so serious and he talks trash. So I'm sure he wants to bring it, especially if Ben's on the other side, he's going to be like, look, this is the three. This is how it goes down. I'll show you again. Just watch me. So I, I could definitely see him putting up a good amount of points and getting easy rebounds and putbacks uh, if Jokic isn't on the floor. Um, yeah. Going back to the other side, I'm thinking if, if I'm LeBron and I, I've got a lot of court time, I'm going to let my shooter shoot. For sure, I'm going to throw up some passes to Giannis, but I, I want to see Dame and Steph. Uh, I want to see them both shoot. Like, if I'm LeBron, I, I just want them to score. You know, I think LeBron's biggest thing from the other side, um, as far as player matchup, maybe Kawhi Leonard. Um, but he, he doesn't have Kevin Durant there. So I think the motivation there on, on, on a one V one battle might be uh, a little deteriorated because of that. Not that LeBron doesn't want to go out and win. Cause we saw that last year. I think he doesn't want to win, but yeah, I, I would see Steph Curry or Dame and with Dame being that disrespected player we've been talking about. Why not? Why not have a bench player be the MVP of the game and have him just go off him and Steph are in their own competitive spirit of three point making, even though they're on the same team. I love to see it. You like go, go logo, you know, threes, uh, both of those guys challenge each other. Um, you know, Hey, I'll make two logo threes this half. Uh, okay. I'm gonna try to make three, you know, something like that, but they don't all, all have to be logo threes, but just for entertainment purposes, I'm sure we'll see them, but I, I want to see those two guys light it up. I, I would like to see Dame drop about anywhere from 39 to 45 points off the bench and then you know it's dame time so maybe he gets a chance of being in there in the last few minutes of the uh the fourth quarter that's true that's a good point like you said that comment earlier and it got me thinking that would be extremely electric to see dame and curry on the court at the same time and what they would be able to do together that's scary to think about right there but uh, yeah i will i want to see dame steph uh Giannis, and lebron on there just you know Drive and kick, maybe CP3 with them. So uh, easy looks, but I mean, it's an all-star game. But you, if you're talking about scoring, I want to look for those players who are extra motivated to play this as if it was a real game. So like I said, I think Dame's got that motivation of I'm not a starter again, but you know, this is what I'm going to do uh, to y'all. And then Joel and being on the other side, he's motivated all the time. He just looks for something to motivate him. So, um, yeah, those would be my two guys from from both teams to um, to carry the scoring load or score the most, not necessarily carry the scoring loads because it's an all star game. Yeah, yeah, I like that. All right, so I don't I don't need you. I don't mean here for you to necessarily like pick a score, but like how the winning team, like around how many points do you think they're going to score? Do you think it's going to be an extremely defensive game where it's around a hundred? Do you think offense is going to take over where it might be up to one thirties, you know, even one fifties or, you know, what's your take on that? It'd be interesting. Interesting to see them get in the one fifties. I think it's definitely going to be over a hundred just because the way that the all-star game has been played here, you know, recently over the last several years, and uh, the last couple of years, too, I think what they try to do is obviously get the starters going in the first quarter. They play the majority of the minutes of the first and then, you know, maybe uh, bring in a few of the uh, bench players with the starters or swap them all out at the same time. And then the second quarter is mostly the, you know, the bench players, because what's going to happen is they're going to get some playing time. Most of their playing time most likely will come in. The first half and then going into the third you'll see them play some but then knowing that the fourth quarter is coming up and how the game is played now uh uh how the team has to get a certain point total to win in the fourth you're going to see where 
it's going to start picking up as far as defense and, and lineups, and they're going to play what feels comfortable and get their um, starters warmed up a little bit. Probably the last two or three minutes of the, um, or no, probably in the middle of the third quarter. And then uh, to start the fourth, you're definitely going to see, I would say, all of the starters, maybe at least uh, three, but I would say just depending on which team is down and, and by how much you might see all of the starters on the court and then maybe integrate a couple more of the uh, bench players in. And then I would say definitely the last six minutes. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's not It's not a minute's base. So I, like I said, it just depends on how close the game is. So if it's a huge margin, let's say – uh, the team that's losing is down double digits. I'm going to say that they're going to have mostly their uh, maybe four starters in, and then they're going to try to the climb back. But like I said, with a lot of the uh, bench players playing in that first half, getting most of their run, then I would say that the bench players may not be as serious as the starters, except for the the first timers. So you're going to see a lot of shots jacked up. Uh, I would say you're going to see a lot of threes made, uh, a lot of threes taken as well. So I would predict, I wouldn't be shocked if it's like a 70 point first half for like both teams. So, you know, 70, maybe 80, just because, you know, you're going to, you, they're going to want to put on a show. You're going to want to see some dunks and you're not going to want to get hurt doing those dunks. And, and the players on the defensive end is going to know that too. So 70 actually might be kind of low, but 70 to 80 range is where I see it. And then, um, you know, picking it up in the, the third quarter, you know, why not throw in another 30, 40 points, depending on how hard the defense is then. So you're looking at 110 points then. Um, and then throw in at least 24 points, I guess, for the fourth quarter. So I would, I would predict that the game is going to be around 135 to 145 points. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But that's just my prediction. You know, a lot of points. We we definitely don't want to see people missing shots until maybe the fourth quarter, depending on who you're rooting for, because you, you want to see defense. But in general, if they're open and they see the basket, these are the best players in the league, in the world. So, you know, definitely a lot of made shots. No playoff piece. No playoff piece. <laughs> I like that. All right, so I got one. Yeah, Paul I George, got one you got to put it in the hoop, man. <laughs> all right i got one more one more prediction for you this is a little bold prediction here uh but who do you think is going to win mvp mvp so like i said again looking at who's going to score the most points and then looking to see who's going to win so i guess it's two questions in one and i'm just going to go bold here I'm going to say Damian Lillard. I'm going to say that he's just going to have a game where he's going to want to score a lot of points. So uh, in that scenario, I am uh, assuming that LeBron's team is going to win and that, yeah, Dame is the one that's going to – you're going to load it up and he might get some of those minutes towards the end of the game, like I said, where even though he's a bench player, they, they might have him in the game. Uh, Luca might say, hey, man, you, you know, I thought you should have started over me. In the first place, so go ahead and play some minutes down the stretch. It's Dame time. I want to see it. So, Dame, Steph, let's go. I know you'd be excited for that. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I like that. I like, uh, you know, I think, you know, everybody would like to see that with Dame with him being so disrespected all the time and underappreciated. So, yeah, I, I love that. I love that prediction. Who I do like you think is going to uh, make the most threes between Dame and Steph? <sighs> I got to go with my guy. Steph, I think it's going to be close. I can, you know, like you said, uh, you know, both pulling up from the logo a lot. And, you know, I think it'll be close. Maybe I'll give, if I had to pick, I, you know, I expect a lot from Curry. Uh, I'd give him maybe, maybe I, I'd say, you know, I'll say six three-pointers. I'll give Curry six and I'll give Dane. Just six or six in the first half? No. Oh. I mean, we're talking, oh, I mean. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking like, you know, the first half, uh, unless they're playing defense early, it's 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 open season for him. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, I know he's not the only one that's going to shoot, but how, all right, let me ask you this. How many do you think Dame and Steph will combine for on three-pointers made? Total? The whole game? Yeah, t the whole game between uh, them two put together. 
you know, I could see them probably together at least getting 15 total maybe. I think 15 is a good number. You know what? This is bold of me, but you know what I'm going to say? 30. You going to, th- 30. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here. 30. It's 30. outrageous. But the All-Star game is outrageous. I want to see entertainment. And the reason why I say 30 is because I'm backing up what I'm saying about, uh, you know, the boy Damian Lillard. You know, if I'm expecting him to score 40 some points and be the MVP, why not give me about, you know, 16 to 18 made threes? And if you're Steph Curry and you feel like, hey, man, you're wow. shooting threes, I'm shooting threes, let me give you at least a dozen or a baker's dozen. That's just a bold prediction, you know, at least 20. Wow, but that's extremely I'm, bold. I'm going to say 30. I want to see 30. 30 made threes, well, but then, hopefully, they, okay, then hopefully what, then they what can do give you me have? at least 20, and, I, and I'd, be, I'd be happy with that. They can give me 20. But I, I want to see some records, bro. So is it just – do you have uh, Braun and Giannis and Jokic just getting rebounds and kicking them back out, offensive boards and kicking them back out? To not them? necessarily. But like I said, if it's a competitive game, not too many people are playing defense in the first half. So I expect Dame to have the green light coming off the bench, you know, I mean, obviously, you got to get other players involved, but if it's gone the way I think it could go and Dame's looking for that MVP and other players are feeding him, kind of like the year, uh, um, I think, when um, Anthony Davis got MVP a few years back when he played for New Orleans and, you know, they just kind of helped pad his stats. You know, Dame's a three-point shooter. He's a scorer, but but like I said, I want to see that, that uh, rivalry between... Steph and Dame on a friendly level, but obviously it's the All Star Game. So hey, I, I want to hear you know a report come out that before the game they both agreed that you know we're going to go at each other as far as you know who's going to make the most threes, and especially since Steph Curry is in the three point competition. So you know what that means? He's warmed up. He's he's going to be ready to go. So. Even if he doesn't win the three point contest, you know, he's getting shots in and he's broken a sweat. So I'm not sure how early of a difference in time that's going to be before the all star game, but he's going to have that motion ready. And if he comes out there and says, Hey, Dame, I'm about to put up some threes for you, buddy. And then Dame responds with, like, Let's check ball. I'm ready to do this. I'm going I'm to outdo you. So that, that's what I want to see. And that's just my bold prediction is for them two guys to, to do a lot of damage between, uh, behind the perimeter and then for them to have uh, a pretty high combined total of threes made for the game. I like that. I like that a lot. You see, any, you see anybody putting up triple-doubles? Oh, that would be interesting. A triple-double in the game. I mean, uh, Jokic has been putting up triple-doubles all the time. But then, like I said, it's all about a minutes game. But – you get in the scenario, what if it's the fourth quarter and with the defensive play, defense being played and it's not time-based and there's some missed shots? You're talking about if he's only had a couple rebounds, but he's starting to gobble them up now. And, and then he's looking for a Dame or Steph or whoever, your, your shooter's down the stretch to get this, get this score up or, or take the lead or, or increase the lead, whatever it is it takes to win. I could see him getting a, a triple double in the All Star game, but then again, you're LeBron. If you're LeBron James, you're the captain. You might want to contribute all over. You know, not necessarily put up a whole bunch of points if you're trying to feed certain players on your team, get them involved. But you know, you're good at making assists. You can get some boards here and there. But my bet would definitely be on on Jokic. So, I guess right now I'm just seeing a whole lot of potential things that favor. LeBron's team with his players that I've been uh, talking about to answer your questions. I like that. Uh, yeah, I could see, I could see your picture. I could see that. What else you got to add? Oh, uh, I don't have a whole lot left for as far as the all-star game coming up, but uh, just a quick thing, just reiterating the, uh, what we got going on in, in between the game between, you know, certain players being drafted to either side. Um, you got Clippers in there 
but obviously you got LeBron on the other side, but you have Kawhi on Durant's team. So you know, that keeps that going as far as uh, team rivalries for the regular season or and or the playoffs. So you have Kawhi and LeBron representing the West um, in the same city. But how about the East with obviously it's not a huge like a um uh, this is, I guess, not a huge deal to make up, but the excitement of New York between Brooklyn and the Knicks, the the Brooklyn Nets and the New York Knicks. You know, you have Julius Randle making his first All Star uh, and being the only Knicks um, in the All Star game this year. But uh, I think they won yesterday's game, beat Detroit, I saw, and put them at 500 even uh, for their win percentage. And I'm not sure exactly where they're sitting at seating wise. Uh, as of right now, but they're playoff bound. But you have obviously the Brooklyn Nets with the the three they have. That's already made a lot of noise. But what team is is exciting for you as far as um, when you combine the elements of of surprise and expectations and just what they're doing in general with with the talent between individual players on the team. I mean, yeah, if you look at it from that from that perspective, I'd have to go, you know, KD's team with a lot. You know, it has it has Kyrie and Harden, which are, you know, already teammates. Um, they can uh, you know, already have, have chemistry built up. And you have you have so many first timers uh, off the bench for uh, Kevin Durant's team. So I mean you don't I mean you think you know what you expect, but I mean you never know. Uh, it's just a lot of undiscovered potential, I guess you could say in the all star game so far. But, yeah, and then, I mean, like you said about, you know, uh, KD still got uh, Julius Randle from the Knicks showing love to the other New York team right there. And I say I'm excited to see all the first start, uh, the first time uh, players and, you know, see how they handle it, see see their enjoyment, see how much they, they get from it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely, um, you know, shout out to the first timers again. Yeah. Um, and players like Zach Levine. So uh, unfortunately right now, I don't think his team is in the playoff seating at the moment, but maybe they can pick some things up and, you know, their coach can get them motivated to maybe make a run or they can do something uh, for trades or maybe Zach Levine has to leave. <laughs> so we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that on another time, but yeah, I mean, you know, the all-star game, it's usually a, a fun time to watch on TV for fans and used to be in person, but uh, hopefully we'll get back to that before long. But um, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it comes down to the end in the fourth quarter. And also the, the all-star weekend, which is this year become an all-star day, how that's going to play out with all the, the contests that they're doing in, in one, one day. But Definitely something that if you're an NBA fan uh, to definitely check out and just, you know, get familiar with the top players of the league if you haven't already. And, you know, this is that break before people start really pushing for the playoffs in the second half if they're on the border of making it or if they're just in a tight race as far as seating. So I think, you know, definitely when we uh, continue this for the next episode, we'll be looking at you know, introducing the second half of the NBA in the second half, kicking it with us and talk about trades, buyouts, um, playoff pushes, and uh, maybe some more uh, breakout performances from some players who are, are still on their way up or players, like you said, the first timers in the uh, all-star game using this all-star game as motivation to uh, – encourage and push their team and to encourage themselves to be even better. So it's definitely not nothing set in stone from here, uh, from what we've seen so far. We just have a lot of positive signs and some, some signs that, you know, some errors for some teams are pointing up as far as potential. So obviously if some teams are moving up in the standings going forward, that means some teams are moving down. So there's always going to be a, a winner and a loser for every game. So it's definitely interesting to see what, what's going to happen and, We'll have some predictions for that um, when we get to that uh, to do a, a little review of the first half of the season, but to see what we think is going to happen in the end. 
would you like to add anything to uh, wrap up this podcast? I think I'm good. I think I said everything I needed to say. I think I want to ask you one more question. What's that question? You listen to a lot of music, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. So I want to ask you if, you know, you're participating in some of these all-star events or just one of these events, you know, what what's bumping right now for you? What do you got on your playlist or on repeat if it's that good? Oh, on repeat. Well, any everybody should know that the six guy Drake himself dropped uh, Scary Hours 2 uh, Thursday night, Friday morning, midnight, three song EP. Uh, yeah, I'm sure every one of them players is going to be having that on repeat. At least I have today. Uh, What's the name of that sure song? What's the name of that song that just dropped with the video you sent me? What's next? What's next? Yeah, I like that what, song. You like that? What's next? And then that has that's the only song with the video. Then you got uh, Once and Needs, and that's featuring Little Baby. Then you got Lemon Pepper Freestyle featuring Rick Ross. Yeah, they're all three. They're all what's next is probably my favorite, but I mean they're all three. I mean, they all three slap. They're amazing. So yeah, there we have it. You know, uh a playlist, small playlist sample from Hugh. And yeah, I think definitely, you know, something to check out if y'all are interested. But NBA players will probably definitely uh, you know, be listening to some of that that new Drake stuff. You know, he's a big NBA fan. You know, shout, shout out to uh Toronto. Um Fred and cousin Fred for looking like Fred uh, Van Fleet. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's something that, you know, hopefully we can bring you some um, current music as far as throwing in what we kind of listen to, but things that we think that the, the players are, are listening to as well. So um, speaking of which, I'm not sure. Do you know of who's going to perform for the all-star game as far as halftime performance? Was it last year or two years ago we had J. Cole? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't heard this year. I actually do not know that. Maybe it'd be a surprise but, drop. Uh, are they are they are they doing a performance with the dunk contest in the middle? Are they still gonna have a performance? That's true. I'm not sure. With COVID, everything might be kind of uh different, or maybe it just might be uh in a separate area, but with uh, a yeah. video, I mean, that's part of the element of, of the all-star game, but obviously that's also for entertainment for the crowd. So I guess with no, I don't think they're having fans. I'm not sure it's in Atlanta. Maybe they have selective fans. I, I didn't keep track of that, but you know, tradition is usually they have a, a performer, but maybe they will yeah. still uh, cut it short. Maybe do one song. I mean, I'm for certain they'll have, some type of uh, performing artist do the the national anthem as well as the Canadian anthem. So, um, so yeah, it would be interesting to see. But yeah, definitely thank you for putting in your input on you know what's new in that perspective of of music. So, but yeah, uh, thank you all for having us here on kicking it in the second half. This wraps up our second episode, and once again, you can find us on our YouTube. Uh, page it's kish yz k i s h y z and uh we should have a twitter coming soon which um if all goes well it will be kish underscore yz so until next time peace <laughs>